Shalom, this is Eric from Holy Land Escape, and in another few days the Jewish people will be celebrating the holiday of Passover, also known as Hag HaMatzot, or the Feast of Unleavened Bread. In this short video, I want to take a look at what is Passover, and more specifically, how is Passover celebrated here in Israel. In the Torah, or what is also referred to as the Five Books of Moses, their prohibition on Passover is possessing or eating chametz. Now, what is chametz? So, in order to understand what the term chametz means, which is translated as leavened bread, we have to look at the rabbinic interpretation, which lists five grains. And these grains are commonly identified as wheat, barley, spelt, rye, and oats. Of these five grains, the most common grain used in making both bread or chametz, leavened bread, and matzah is wheat. What happens is that when wheat comes into contact with water, wheat is ground into flour, and the flour comes into contact with water, a chemical process is initiated that gives off a very distinct smell, and inevitably, if the dough is left alone, it inevitably starts to rise. And this is the process known as machmitz, or leavening. So what is the difference between chametz, which is leavened, versus matzah, which is unleavened? Well, the Talmud tells us that it is essentially the distance that it takes to walk a Roman mile, which is commonly identified as 18 minutes. So whenever the mixture of flour and water come into contact and are left alone for more than 18 minutes, it becomes leavened, which is forbidden on Passover. Now, since heat is what aids in the process of that dough rising or becoming leavened, when making matzah, cold water is used, and as a matter of fact, water that rested overnight. In the ancient world, they didn't have the refrigerator, so when they would leave water that would sit overnight, especially in a warm climate, it would become a lot cooler. So it's called water that rested, literally, and that's what's used in making matzah. It's often been said that the real matzah, the real unleavened bread that our Israelite ancestors ate when they left Egypt and in the desert for many years was pro probably not the hard matzah that is common today, but rather a kind of pita lafa, soft uh, kind of bread that the Bedouin eat today. And the Jews that came from Yemen, from the country of Yemen, traditionally would make matzah at home. However, it's very interesting that Yemenite Jews that I've spoken with in Israel all have fond memories in their childhood of making matzah, but at some point they stopped. And the practice is quite uncommon today. And a lot of it has to do with the severity of chametz, of leaven. We do everything we can on Passover to distance ourselves from leaven products in any way. So the matzah eaten by Jews today is commonly baked in large industrial matzah factories. Some of the factories use machines, what's known as machine-baked matzah, and other matzah is known as shmura matzah, matzah that's guarded, which is matzah that's baked by hand. Today, Passover is known, certainly in Israel, as well as throughout the Jewish world, as the cleaning holiday. Why is it the cleaning holiday? Because in order to remove all of the leaven products from our home, we have to search for it. You know, in the ancient world, before the invention of refrigerators, people would not have food in their house more than what they needed to eat, basically, for the day or two. But today, because of refrigerators and freezers, people generally go shopping and they have several weeks worth of food. And it's a lot more complicated to get rid, figure out a way to get rid of all of the food than it was in the ancient world. Traditional Jews also change over their silverware and all of the utensils that are used throughout the year for leaven products, for chametz. On Passover, we only use utensils that are specifically used for Passover, that don't come in contact with leaven products. Certain utensils can be koshered by essentially boiling them in water or, and or uh, heating them up to a very high temperature, what's known as blowtorching them until they become red. In Hebrew, it's called libun. And throughout Israel, every neighborhood has set centers where people can take their utensils, certain utensils that can be koshered, and they're able to ask questions about if it's able to be koshered or not to be koshered, and if so, how to kosher it. And these are services that they offer. 
On the night before Passover, after nightfall, we take a candle and do a symbolic search for the chametz, for the leaven products. And traditionally, we hide 10 different pieces of leaven bread, small pieces of bread wrapped up in kind of a newspaper. And it's a lot of fun, especially for children. And we go on a search and we take that chametz. And the next day, we burn the chametz. And we also recite a declaration annulling all of the chametz, all of the leaven products that we have in our possession. Although in Israel, most of the Jews are not what's known as orthodox or not uh, fully observant. When it comes to Passover, the prohibition against eating leaven products is very widely observed. And therefore, bakeries in Israel and pizzerias close. Even pizzerias or bakeries that are not kosher close. And grocery stores, all of the major chains of grocery stores also do not sell chametz. The chametz, the leaven products that they have are covered up. Uh, you're not able to return products that are not kosher to pa for Passover to a store during Passover. And there are also what's known as chametz laws, or laws against selling leavened products. What does chametz, or leavened bread, what does it symbolize? Because Jews are so obsessive about doing everything we can to get rid of our chametz and not even using utensils that came into contact with chametz, what does it symbolize? The most common answer that has been given is that it symbolizes a kind of Haughtiness. If you picture bread that rises, if you picture dough that rises, the longer it's left alone, the more it rises. It's kind of something that's like haughtiness or an overblown ego. Another symbolism of chametz is the evil inclination. And that can be different from person to person. Now, on the holiday of Passover, we ask the question, what does it mean to be free? Because Passover is the holiday of freedom. That's one of the most common names of Passover. What does it mean to be free? And most people assume, oh, that's easy. That means you can do anything you want whenever you want. Well, people who have addictions can't do anything they want whenever they want because a lot of times people who have addictions are slaves to their addictions. In other words, drug addicts or alcoholics or people with gambling addictions, they may have certain goals in life that they want to achieve, but because of their addictions, they're unable to achieve those goals. So one of the important questions that we ask ourselves in the days ahead of Passover is, what is your chametz? What is it that stands in the way of you achieving your objective? And everyone has a different answer, and the answer is obviously personal. I have a friend who told me that internet blogs are his chametz. What did he mean? He meant that when he went to the internet blogs and he started reading, he would stay on the internet for hours. And he couldn't stop, even though he wanted to stop, and he realized maybe he had to wake up early the next morning. He would read and read and read. And that's a typical example of something that, well, on the surface of it, he's free, he's free, he can do whatever he wants, no one is stopping him. But on the other hand, he's not completely in control of himself because of that. So like chametz, which we completely get rid of and we have absolutely nothing to do with, you know, even the slightest amount of chametz that gets mixed in is no good. And that's one of the symbolisms of Passover is that when it comes to certain things in life that stand in the way of us achieving our goals. And even though in general it's healthy to have a balance to take the middle road, well, when it comes to certain things for certain periods of time, you may have to make a complete big break from. And that's one of the powerful symbolisms of chametz. During the time of the first and second temple in Jerusalem, until approximately 2,000 years ago, the highlight of Passover was the Paschal sacrifice that was offered on the 14th of the first month, which is the month of Nisan, which today is on the eve of Passover, all of the Jewish people would ascend to Jerusalem, to the Holy Temple, and the priests would offer the Paschal lamb, and everyone would come and eat of the Paschal sacrifice in Jerusalem. And this was the ultimate symbolism of Jewish unity. So in the aftermath of the destruction of the Second Temple about 2,000 years ago, the highlight of Passover has become what's known as the Passover Seder. The Passover Seder is a meal that's had with family and friends, and certain symbolic foods are eaten in retelling the story of the exodus from Egypt. Four glasses of wine are had, the matzah, or the unleavened bread, it's a mitzvah, it's a commandment from the Torah to eat. Uh, olives worth of matzah, the olive kind of is a measurement that the rabbis use, the minimum amount of matzah that every person must eat. 
bitter herbs are eaten that remind us of the bitterness of slavery. We dip certain vegetables in salt water, which also reminds us of the tears of slavery, etc. We have all of these prompts that help to really set the spirit. And this is one of the highlights of Judaism. Those who are even not very involved Jewishly have the tradition of sitting around the table and having a Passover Seder of one kind or another. Thank you for watching. Holy Land Escape wishes everyone a Chag Kasher V'Sameach, a happy and kosher Passover, as we say. And to our Christian friends, we wish you a happy Easter. And as always, we look forward to seeing everyone in Israel sometime soon. Shalom.